So this video marks our final entry in the Equipment System Tutorial Series. We've got a pretty good system here. We can click on items to equip them. We can see a preview of stats. When we do equip items, our player's display image changes dynamically, and we can right-click items to drop them back out of our inventory. The only thing missing at this point is something kind of extra to the equipment system, and that's having our player's in-game sprite change dynamically with his gear. Now this is an incredibly complex task, and it will look very different depending on how you do your character animation. I won't be able to cover all of the possibilities here, but I want to give you a good start. If you use a rig style of animation, I'll show you how to dynamically switch sprites from your equipment screen, and if you want to know more, I've included a link in the description to Tarot Dev's 2D workflow series. For those who are using a sprite-based animation, as I am, I'll show you how to create your own custom animation overrider, so you can swap out animations depending on which gear is equipped. We've got a lot to do, so let's get started. So the first method we're going to look at here is how to swap sprites for a rigging style of animation. This is not a how to create rigging animations. I'll leave some links in the description for that. But I do want to show how to swap out sprites from your equipment inventory and give an example of how I use this for my weapon animations. First, I create an empty game object on the player called main hand. I then give this sprite a weapon sprite as a placeholder and rotate it into place. I have an animation set up that just moves this hand through a sword arc. So now, all I have to do to swap out weapons is change this single sprite and then I can reuse the swinging animation for all of them. If you want to know more about how to animate sword swings, you can check out my Animating Melee Weapons tutorial. At this point though, we need to figure out how can we trigger the sprite change for our weapons from our equipment system. And to make all this happen, we're going to head into our scripts folder and open up our equipment slot. And what we want to do from here is just make it so that when we equip a weapon, it actually changes the sprite for our main hand. To do this, we'll have to start by making a reference to the sprite renderer in game main hand sprite renderer. Now we will need to head down to our start method in order to tell it how to find that. So we'll just say that in game main hand sprite renderer is equal to, and we'll have to do a game object dot find. And we'll just search for the object called main hand that we just created. And at this point we can get component and just grab the sprite renderer. At this point we can scroll down to equip gear method and head to our if item type is main hand. And we already have one command in here, which is just sending information to our main hand slot. But we want to add a new function. So we're just going to add some curly brackets so that we can put some more commands in here. And at that point, we can just simply tell it that the in-game main hand sprite renderer needs its sprite to be equal to item sprite. Back in Unity, now I'm just going to click on that main hand object that I have here. And I just want to make sure that it currently has no sprite equipped. So now when I first get in the game, you'll notice that my sword is gone. I can collect the sword, equip it to my player. And now when I get in the game, he's got the sword on him. Next up, I just want to point to how you could set up your animation if you were doing a sprite animated style the way I am, where you're actually drawing the different poses of each sprite. This will not be a complete tutorial, just kind of an overview of how I've set this up with some code examples so that you could do it for yourself if you like. So first off, let's assume that your player is fully animated. So you could click on your player, take a look at your animations. And for example, here is my body part. Now, as I've mentioned in other videos, I've broken my player into the distinct parts that I want to animate. And so I've created an animation for each of these. Now, anytime I want to change the animation because of a piece of gear, for example, I have to animate that shirt and create another animation to go with it. So for example, I could swap out the animation with a shirt animation that is essentially set to do the exact same thing. Now the trick is what we want to do is make it so that when we equip a new piece of gear, it changes the animation that is associated in our animator with that specific state. So for example, my idle state needs to switch so that it now has the traveler shirt instead of a naked pose. All right, now quick note before I go any further, it should be noted that Unity does have a built-in animator overrider. Unfortunately, that controller won't work for this situation because when you equip a new piece of gear, it overwrites all of your slots and creates some problems. So yes, I'm aware that that's out there, but it didn't work for this specific case. So I'll just show how you can create your own custom animator overrider. I'm just gonna start by heading over to my hierarchy where you can create an empty object called animation override manager. 
I'm just going to add component and we'll create a new script here called animator overrider. All right, so we're going to begin by declaring some variables up at the top here. The first one I'm going to make is actually a protected animator and we'll call this one animator, especially as our project gets larger, it keeps us from having scripts overwriting each other and running into trouble. I'm also gonna make one other protected variable. This one is gonna be an animator override controller. Now, yes, this is precisely the thing I just showed you in Unity and said we're not using because it won't work, but we're gonna be creating a custom version in this script. Next up, you're just gonna wanna make a series of public animation clips variables and this is where we're just going to store the naked poses for the character so that whenever you unequip an item it knows what pose it needs to revert back to. I'm just going to do two for this example but you'll want to make sure to do one for each of your character's poses. All right with that done we can head down to our start method and first of all we just want to find our animator. In my case it can be found. Um, I call mine my animator controller which is just a empty game object on my player that holds all the animations and we'll just get the component of the animator. So now we can talk to our player's animator, which handles all of the different animations for all the body parts. Now with that done, this is the part where it gets a little tricky. And essentially what we're gonna do is create a new animator override controller. And essentially that's just gonna override the animator controller that's currently running our player and cause um, a new one to come into place that only uses the animations we want. And then once we've done that, we'll want to apply that new animation override controller to the player. So to do that, first of all, I'm just gonna type in our variable we created up top, the overrider animate controller, and tell it that it's gonna be equal to a new. So we're essentially creating our own animator overrider, and we'll just type animator runtime animator controller. Now that we've created a brand new controller, we're just gonna go animator dot runtime animator controller is equal to animator override controller. This just allows us to make changes to the new version without changing the original animator controller that our player has. That was a little bit complicated. We can get rid of our update here. The rest is actually pretty straightforward. So first of all, I'm just gonna make a public method here. We'll just call this one unequip animations. And this one's just going to take in one variable, which will just be the item type. We'll call it item type. Essentially all that's going to happen here is our equipment scriptable object will send over what type of equipment has just been unequipped and then we'll do stuff with it. So if the item type, now here we're just going to need to figure out well what item type do we need to unequip. So we'll say if the item type that's just been unequipped is equal to item type dot and in this case let's do body. Then we just need to do one thing. We're going to grab our animator override controller and tell it now here we need to type the name of the actual um, naked animation that we're using. So in my case, if I were to go into my animator here and for my body, click on the idle state. Right now I call this animation as body idle naked. So I just need to use that exact name. So here I would just type in with quotation marks, body idle naked. And so that's the animation on our controller that we want to change. And we're now going to make it equal to shirt naked animation clip. So essentially, at the moment, that would do nothing, is that's what it starts as. But all we're going to do now is just make it so that whatever has been put in place of our idle naked pose, we now want to replace it with a naked top. You would do the same thing, say, for our legs. And in this case, rather than body, mine is called legs. All right, you'd do that for each of your body parts. And then while we're here, let's just make one more section this time. I'm going to grab our unequip method because our equip method is going to be very similar. Obviously though we would call it equip animation. Now this time though the thing is this animation overrider has all of our naked animations stored but it doesn't have all of the animations for every other piece of gear we're ever going to have. That animation is actually going to be stored in our scriptable object and so here we need to pass that information in. So not only will we need to get our item type, we'd also need to get a couple of animation clips. So for example, we'd get one animation clip, which would be the idle clip. And for now, actually, I'm just going to take in idle clips. But if you want to completely do your character, you'll probably want to get a clip for his walk pose, his sword swing pose, and on and on and on. But for this demo, we're just going to do the idle clip. Now, if it's the body that we're changing, essentially what we want to do is take the animator override controller. And again, we are looking at the idle slot. 
which started as naked, so we'll leave that there. And all we need to do now is put in the new clip that just got passed in. So in this case, idle. It's actually as simple as that. We do the same thing down here. Back in Unity, if we click on our animator override manager in the hierarchy, we'll just see now that there's spots for our naked animations. And so you'll just have to track down wherever you've put those. So in my case, I would have my body idle naked and do the same thing for my legs. Now our animator overrider knows what the naked poses look like. So anytime we unequip, it can put those into the animator slots. Now we just need to head into our equipment scriptable object so that we can let each of the scriptable objects themselves know what the poses are going to look like with the new gear we're equipping. All right, so when we get into our equipment scriptable object, there's not a lot we have to do here, but there is a couple of things. So first of all, I'm going to make a serialized field, and this is going to be a private reference to our animation clips. So essentially when we create a new piece of gear, we just need to put in here all of the different animations that come along with it. So at this point, I'm just simply going to create an idle clip, but obviously you would want to do this for each of the different poses that your character is going to have in the game. At this point we can head down to, let's do our equip item first. So here we're just going to type game object dot find, and we'll type the name of the object in our game that we're looking for, so in this case the animation override manager. And then on that object, we want to find the specific component we're looking for, which is our animation overrider. And then we just want to send it a message. We want to tell it that it is going to equip an animation. Now, it's not going to like that at the moment because in our animation overrider, you'll see that our equip animation needs to know what item type we're sending over and also what the animation is. And so in here, we would just want to add item type which it already knows what that is. And finally, we want to send over the idle clip. With that done, we would send over the clip and our animation overrider would do the work of applying it to our character. Now to unequip, we're gonna do something very similar. So I'm just gonna copy this line for now. Head down here to our unequip item. And the difference this time is that first of all, we're gonna call unequip animation. And we don't need to send over a clip because it already knows what the naked clip looks like. We just need to say what item we're dealing with. All right, at this point we're pretty close to being ready to go, but what we're just going to need to do is head into our assets and click on our equipment scriptable objects. Now, I've already created a shirt and shorts. Now when I click on the traveler's shirt, you'll notice that there's now a spot where I can put my idle clip. And so you'll want to make sure to put in whatever the clip is for the animation that goes along with that item and then do the same thing for your shorts. And while you're here, just make sure that you have set your item type, otherwise it won't know how to read that. All right, so now when you get into the game, you should be able to collect gear. Like before, you can add your sword, but now you should also be able to add your shirt and layer in things like pants, and you'll notice that it is indeed updating. I realized that the animation swapping wasn't quite as in-depth as the equipment tutorials, but this topic's a little more niche, and with my audience size, let's be honest, there's a good chance only five or six people will actually make it this far. Congrats if you did, you are a warrior. If you'd like to see more on this topic, or if there are other topics you're interested in, be sure to mention them in the comments. I've also started posting polls on my Patreon page, and no, you don't have to be a patron to vote. Thanks so much for taking the time to watch. Until next time, this is Matt with Nightrun Studio. Cheers.